What's happening, everyone? Welcome to a special edition of RH Max Show How to Be an Influencer in 20 Minutes. I've got a lot of content to go through, so uh, you might be able to watch it on 0.75 speed if I, if I go too fast. Get your questions in the chat. This will be a shorter stream, it'll be over 20 minute stream, but uh, I hope in 20 minutes I can at least go through the major points of uh, what I've learned over the past couple of years of streaming, influencing, content creation, uh, whatever you want to call it in the ecosystem. So I think this will hopefully this will be helpful to the next generation of people who come to uh, come into crypto, who want to stream and interact with people and engage. And uh, no matter how they end up doing it one way or another, uh, hopefully this will give them a head start because I had a lot of people when I when I first started, not a lot of people, but I had a few people give me some tips and, and uh, crypto kindness actually helped me out a lot in the beginning, just to really wrap my head around like uh, what to do in certain places and things like that. So anyways, I call myself a creator more than influencer as I do more than streaming. Like it's a big part of my content creation. And of course I give, I avoid giving financial advice in any way, shape or form. Another important disclaimer uh, and way of speaking and a way to be upfront uh, about that. That's very important in content creation too. But um, yeah, I watched a lot of videos and stuff and got help from people in the beginning. So I wanted to start off with, um, I'll share the screen too, and I'll get to chat in a minute, get and put any questions you have there, and I'll uh, get to them. Another part of streaming is talking to the chat, which uh, I may touch on a little bit today as well. But really, just the first thing is get a laptop, get a computer. And I recommend you get something that isn't, um, let's see, we can just type in like, I don't know, laptop. Get something that's not of uh, your your own computer. I, th I like to keep it separate. Honestly, I would just invest unless you just simply cannot afford to get another computer or don't have another one laying around. But if you just type in, you know, look for just any kind of mid mid size laptop, uh, something that I would say 16 gigs of RAM, at least, um, you know, just kind of like three, maybe $400, $500 range somewhere through there. If you want to get a new one, I always like to get new stuff because uh, I think they, they last longer. For example, you have less problems, less things to worry about. Yeah, I would say any of these would be okay. One terabyte hard drive, 32 gigs of RAM. You know, uh, you're going to want another, a different type of webcam. I guess you can use the default one, but, you know, with all the different 4K and options like that, you need a different one. But anyways, I'd say around 500 bucks would be a solid laptop. Uh, or if you want to do a MacBook, you can do MacBook. I love Macs uh, for a lot of other reasons, security and otherwise. But you can do Windows. Um, you know, different stuff on there too. It's going to be obviously cheaper than a MacBook, for example, but laptop. Yeah. Again, for, I think it's best to have a dedicated streaming computer, one that you can keep separate from all your other stuff. And so that way, when you, if you're ever sharing a screen or otherwise, you know, you're not trying to like, Oh, I don't want to show this or that you can help only presenting and only sharing tabs and stuff like that. But just in general, it's cool to, you know, keep stuff physically separate in a lot of ways. Uh, so when is laptop two, let's look at the, the, um, camera. So, I got, you know what? I can't remember the name of mine, but I got Logitech. Don't they make like a stream cam? I want to say it's like a stream cam version. I went through a few different cameras at first, but I think stream cam. Yeah, I feel like, I think this is similar to the one I have. So this is, I mean, it's a pretty high end one. Uh, it doesn't have to be this nice, but I think the stream cam um, is a pretty cool one. 60 frames per second, 1080p, all that stuff too. I have a bunch of different versions, but I don't know. I wouldn't say go cheap on the camera because different cameras have different different abilities to just make the experience better uh, for the viewers. And it depends on if you're on a bigger room, small room, if you got walls, if you got a green screen, I'll get into that too. But I think just having a good camera just sets you up as a strong foundational base for all of this stuff too. Coffee is optional in streaming, but I like it from time to time. Coffee, tea, or uh, otherwise just something to... Uh, you know, that's funny enough. Yeah, it's it's easy if you talk a lot during the stream too. Maybe your voice goes hoarse or you need a sip or it just goes dry otherwise. So keeping uh, something nearby where you can just, you know, uh, very easily take a sip or so is, is pretty, pretty good too. So camera, let's talk about microphones. So a lot of different options there. I went through a few. Uh, I'll say a lot of people like the Snowball. So that would be the blue... Let's see blue snowball yeah this is like a classic one pretty cheap there's different versions and stuff like that too but this is like kind of this the run the mill a lot of people like it uh it's just like a basic mic there's also the uh roadie nt for example 
uh, you know, a little bit nicer, different ways. I don't know. I, I hate to say nicer because they all have their different features and diff it's like 50 different kinds of microphones and everyone has their own favorite style. But I like the, uh, the Rode uh, NT USB. I can just plug into a computer. I don't have a whole studio set up. A lot of people have their, they, they're like these audio files that they have all this crazy setup and stuff before. For me, that's, I, I just, I want a laptop. I want a camera. I want a mic. I can just all plug in USB style and, you know, get an adapter for certain stuff too. Now, one of my new microphones though that I really like is recommended by Chef DJ Cryptomatic, the Shure SMB7. They also have a USB uh, adapter and packages and stuff you can get with it too. So this is a really good one. This is one I'm, I'm currently using. I really like it. Uh, it's probably the best one I've had so far. Uh, it can get pricey though. The different versions, uh, the ones that come with the different adapters and USB adapters and stuff too. They are pretty awesome, but yeah, they're a little bit more high end. So that's going to uh, run into a bigger budget. But you can also do with, with microphone, for example, mine is, I call it like invisible. So you can do it away from your face. I don't, I just personally don't like to see a microphone. I like it to you know, just look like, I like to have decent sound and decent video and just, just good enough stuff, but I don't have anything in my way. It's like, I don't know, just, for me, I just feel like the interaction is more personal. If it looks like I'm just talking into the camera instead of talking into a microphone that goes into the, you know, across the internet type of thing, just my style. I mean, most people have a mic in front of them their entire stream, uh, or, you know, they face it to the side, they face it to the front, they drop it from the top. Depending on your setup, your environment, you can play with it and do a bunch of different ways. But just for my particular setup and stuff, uh, I, I, I like the invisible style. So you got the camera, you got your mic, you got a laptop uh, or otherwise a computer. And then um, let's talk about, before I get into I'll talk about the hardware first, let's do lighting and then we'll get into StreamYard. So lighting, a lot of times, honestly, you just, just I like the ring lights. You can kind of clip them places. They're, they're cheap. Uh, not those ring lights, the uh, streaming, these kind of, am I saying it right? Yeah. Ring light. Okay. That's, that's confusing. Yeah. So stuff like this. Yeah. The, the, there's an actual ring. So you can clip them on different places. You can put in different ways. I hate getting a reflection. You know, I don't like shadows either, but I can't get rid of everything uh, every time. And there's different trade-offs and you can, if you know, there are all kinds of different things you can play with it and, and get your own style. And it depends on if you like to stand up or sit down and stuff like that too. Um, but anyways, lighting, you get really cheap lighting. You can adjust the brightness, adjust the, the hue and different stuff too with it. So that's pretty cheap. And then StreamYard. <clears throat> so StreamYard is, there's a bunch of different ways to stream. You can do it natively through YouTube and your own hardware, your own software, whatever it is. To me, StreamYard is the only thing that really made sense. I think it's the best bang for buck. I think it's the easiest way to do it. Uh, they even record your videos. You can stream to Twitter. Um, it's not free. I mean, I guess you can get started for free, but the free version, they put their, uh, their watermark and their logo and stuff on it. Can't really change the branding a lot. So to me, it, it's, you know, if you're going to be serious about streaming and stuff um, and you want to have good branding and you want people to, you know, if you don't want to just advertise for StreamYard, you actually want to advertise for your channel and, and, and get a logo and branding and stuff like that it's like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, you know, up to 50 bucks or so for different premium editions and stuff. But for me, it's totally worth it. Uh, if, cause I'm, you know, I'm streaming pretty frequently. So StreamYard is the way that you is, is one way that you can connect. You can go to live stream, you can schedule ahead of time. You can add thumbnails. You can tell it where to stream to different, uh, locations, YouTube, Twitter, like I said, and it just makes it really easy. You can share the link. You can give a guest a link. You just send it to them and say, Hey, show up at this time. They click the link and they can do it from any device. They don't need to have any special hardware setup uh, or anything like that. People can do it from their phones and stuff too. So StreamYard pretty much must. Um, so we got, so we got the, the hardware, we got the, um, the ability to stream the service, the platform. So your attire, again, I like to keep my brand, my, my, my stuff consistent, like casual clothes, hat, maybe necklace, maybe Burberry bear, a Burberry bear appearance from time to time. Uh, but, or you just show up either way. It's like you're streaming to strangers online. So it's like, uh, for me, I want to prep a little bit beforehand, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not like a, it depends on what kind of, yeah, I don't know. We'll talk about style and content and all that stuff in a bit, but you know, your, your branding, your marketing, your ability to, um, you know, 
just get people to remember you and and come off as unique in some way and, and not just a general uh you know thing out there that's not as interesting i think it's i think that's important and then once you do start streaming and all that stuff too i'm gonna i'm bounce around a little bit because i'm kind of like i just got a lot to go through and i just want to kind of hit on a few points that are overlapping too once you choose your branding you know you can talk about do it you can do like an intro video or uh otherwise get inter, get introduced into the community um you know you can kind of set up a, a profile and start contributing and maybe start being a guest on other people's shows and get used to it there's a whole nerve things if you're not good at public speaking or haven't done it a lot there's a whole deal with that but practice really does make perfect like my 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 last hundred videos or live streams have been much better than my first hundred live streams and videos not just based on the microphone and equipment and camera and lighting but just you know the presentation the format all that stuff too so yeah being honest about your goals with yourself with your audience if you want to all that stuff too or refining them till you like them and you get them in there and they're better in whatever way you want to be. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I like it when the subs go up, I like, you know, I got YouTube studio and, you know, I check it from time to time and I, you know, I see subs go up I see, you know, trends and all this stuff too. Uh, and it's nice, but it's not the purpose of my channel. So like that, that's, I think, um, you know, for me, it's like trying to bring people good information. I feel like I've, I try to keep informed. I try to take in a lot of content and then, be able to curate that and talk about the things that I think are most interesting that can help our ecosystem, not just help our ecosystem. But again, I'm doing this. I think this is generally for people coming into crypto. If they like air, you know, hex pulse chain ecosystem, that's great. Uh, but in general, just, just creating content that helps our community. I mean, that's just one of the things, one of my goals for the channel too. It's not, and if the number goes up, I think a lot of that would take care of itself. So I don't monetize. I did a whole blog. If you're interested in that, I don't know how much YouTube pays for this stuff. I don't think it's very much unless you're a really big channel. Uh, I've never heard anyone say that they they got rich monetizing. But hey, you know, I, everyone's financial state's a different way. Some people need it. Some people don't. Uh, I don't, fortunately. So I just don't even want to be, you know, again, I'm not going to go. In the, you guys can see the long form version of this uh, here. I did a whole blog about like talking about different ideals and stuff on that. Um, but I think that's another thing you, you can decide to do once you get to a certain point. I can't remember what it is. Maybe you, you get so many views or so many subs or whatever. You can start monetizing if you want. You can flip it on and do all that stuff too. But for me, I just, I, I don't. And like I said, you check out the blog if you want a long form version of that. Um, so again, yeah, I, for me, I like to, I try to bring people good information. Um, I try to learn myself. It's a win-win. So streaming is like, I can get access to people. I can have conversations for an hour or two with people and ask them my own questions and kind of get like learn myself and I can scale that and show everyone else and like reuse the content. And well, some, sometimes it's evergreen content. Sometimes I can make playlists of just like crypto fundamentals. Like if you go to go real DeFi and you click on under learn to earn, uh, if you go to onboarding, there's different clips there. Uh, there's, I mean, a lot of them are just produced videos and stuff. Um, like most of my content is, is live streams and I do almost all of it myself and all this stuff too, or most, most of the stuff, but some of it I do, you know, get produced by other people or, or otherwise. Um, but a lot of these are, I mean, some of these even here for onboarding are just clips from different interesting resources or different conversations I've had on the channel. And, uh, there's also, so if you go to playlists, let's see, let's just go to RH max. I'll show you the playlists. If you go to where's crypto fundamentals, yeah, a lot of this evergreen content of just like um, yield chasing, stable coins, deep dives, uh, advantages in the art rich ecosystem, MetaMask stuff. Uh, some of it's like about um, flash loans and just just different ways what luck has to do with it. You know, just just a whole bunch of different um, yeah deep dives and technical content and stuff too. And that's just part of part of my channel and how I do it. So uh, your privacy, again, I think I like using a separate computer and all that stuff too. Again, it just makes screen sharing easier if you, t if you plan on doing that to talk about stuff, either current events or otherwise. Uh, it just saves a lot of time because sometimes, as, you know, I've had guests on the channel before share their screen and, and oh, I got to, you know, they shared something, they doxed themselves in some way or whatever, or shared something they wanted anyone else to see. And I got to go back and blur it out or edit it or something too. So. It just saves a lot of time for yourself if you just keep everything separate, keep your account separate, keep a browser 
use a different browser than you would normally do if you're using your same personal computer. And there's just no benefit in telling people a lot of stuff too, like about your personal life. So, um, I mean, everyone can choose their own level of privacy and anonymity to the internet. Um, and I got a lot of privacy uh, videos on the uh, channel as well. Click on privacy on googledefi.com. Talk about OPSEC, talk about, you know, security and, and uh, different things like that too. But yeah, so you can choose that. Um, and then again, there's like a whole bunch of different stuff I can talk about. I'm just trying to jump around a little bit, but also keep consistent. Uh, community, again, pick, picking your community. I chose the Hex Pulse Chain community. Very important. When you start streaming with that community or support, you might get a handful of random people each stream, like literally a handful. Like when I first started out, I had a community that I was streaming for and I still only had sometimes less than 10 people watching some of the streams. It was just like, oh man, it's just hard. The ROI is just hard for that. It's like, I got to have, you know, more people than that for, for the, but it, it's always like that in the beginning. Like it's really hard um, in the beginning. And that's kind of just the, the hill you got to climb if, uh, you know, just, you got to kind of expect, not expect, expect success overnight for sure. So if you find a community that you get a lot of engagement from, such as Hex and Pulse Chain community, and you're able to do it in a fair, you know, truthful, honest way, I hope, um, you can build it up over time and you can, uh, you know, when you tell people about streams, again, I could do hours of just talking about the different nuance and stuff about, you know, uh, announcing streams, talking about streams, uh, tweeting, retweeting and posting and different hashtags and all that stuff too. But I'm going to try to keep this uh, more concise, but um, learning how to do that, telling people why it's important that they watch um, or you just build up a reputation where people think you talk about interesting things. So they sub, they like, they hit the belly button, all, all that stuff too. Shout out there, friend, so me. They, uh, then it makes it a lot easier too. But when you're first starting out, you really got to, Again, don't, not clickbait. I really encourage people not to do that. It's just not necessary, I don't think. I don't think it's a good, healthy thing to do. Um, it's just my personal opinion on it. Uh, I like to focus on value. I think if you focus on value, so for example, if, if you give, if you make yourself the product, right? Like if you're you know, selling yourself in a way, again, you don't have to do it in a monetization way or whatever, but most people do. But I'm just saying, if you sell yourself, it's giving a, people a reason to listen to you or talk to you or give you their time. If you put in the work and provide value over time, that's one thing, your reputation and all that stuff. And then again, you got to be careful not to measure yourself by the numbers. Like, just like I don't measure myself by the candle color in the, in the bear market, for example, like I don't measure myself by how many subs I have or likes or whatever. It's, those are good things to have. I like those little dopamine hits, but it's not the reason I'm here. So I avoid matching my mood with the price chart, candle colors. Um, it takes effort. I'm very deliberate about it, but I'm not perfect but I think it helps a lot. So focusing on value, determining what, how you're going to provide value to which community. And again, I think the Pulse and uh, Hex, Hex community is a great one to do it. There's a ton of engagement. Every new streamer that comes over, they just get a ton of likes and subs and, you know, people tag them and they say nice things. They get a lot of encouragement. So uh, I think overall it's a, it's a great place just to get your start in streaming. Honestly, like in crypto, it's like, wow, you want to become a Hex or Pulse chain streamer? Um, there's, there's a crowd who is hungry for good information for sure. And then be consistent. Um, again, I, I don't pressure yourself. I don't do a daily show. Um, I think those are just hard to sustain in so many different ways. And I just, I just don't think, I just don't want to spend that much time to come up with things to talk about each day that are interesting in order to do it. So I don't want to so sit up here and be like, Oh, what do you want to talk about? Oh, okay. I don't know. Chat, tell me, do all the work for me sort of thing. Like, it's nice to have, but um, I just think being consistent, good information. I schedule out clips. Again, I can you guys follow up if you have questions, stuff on that. I do a lot of like little little things I think are really helpful. But consistently good information, timely reporting on events too is just like a bonus. You can get a lot of views and stuff uh, and help people get information they need quickly if you are up to date on a topic that's happening right now. And yeah, if you give society what they want at scale, that's a Naval quote, they tend to reward you. Like, I think that's the way it's supposed to work. It's pretty cool. So for me, I usually have an hour or two uh, during the day on most days where I can work on whatever I want uninterrupted. I can code, I can create content, I can stream, I can go to the gym, I can do whatever I want. I just sometimes or often, I guess these days, I've just been choosing streaming to use uh, part of that time for. So you don't have to stream to uh, to create content all the time. Like you can just 
you can tweet, you can engage with the community in other ways. Um, Kaiza, Hex Can Heal, our friends Omi are great examples of just like, you don't have to stream in order to provide a, a, you know value to the community. Uh, Somi does videos and tweets at a massive scale. It's just uh, incredible. So uh, yeah, you can just show up and like listen for interesting things to clip and post clips and tag people and people like that. Like I like it when people show up and tag things that I think are interesting for my streams, even though I do the same thing too. Like I, 99% of my stuff is live stream and then clip. So, um, which leads me into the next part, get really good at thumbnails. <laughs> I, I feel I've created, well, I mean, I've got over 2000 videos on the channel, so I must have created, I guess, yeah, I must have created around 2000 thumbnails or so or more. Um, so yeah, when I first started out, I didn't know what to do, how to put the pieces together, how to connect these things, how to make a good thumbnail. I still don't think I'm the best at thumbnails and I've evolved and changed the different ways I do it in different ways. Uh, over time too, but uh, I'm much better than I used to be. And Canva, so canva.com. This is the best website for thumbnails, for you can make video. I literally made my entire branding package with Canva. I made video, I made a music video intro and outro with Canva before, before I had, I got someone to make me a branding package and stuff. I did, did my logo, my original logo, all with Canva. So I don't know how much it costs, it's probably like 10 bucks a month or something um 10 or 20 bucks whatever but it is totally worth it for content creators because you give you access to ai and thumbnails and videos and uh just a ton of different infographic type stuff i did with them before it's amazing so canva is it's amazing and again if you're not broke don't be afraid to pay for things to help you like i buy books i buy physical audio books whatever access to content creation tools canva I like bead bead.io um I like Opus, Opus.io, I think that does uh, like AI short, short stream stuff. So uh, if you plan to be a serious streamer, like you're probably going to have some sort of monthly subscriptions, like from, from StreamYard, from Canva, um, maybe some other ones, but those are the two I think are like indispensable for as far as my, uh, my monthly subscription type things. Like I'd, I'd rather, and YouTube premium, like just in general, not having ads on you. I don't know how people do it. Like they waste so much time with ads. YouTube premium. I'd rather have YouTube premium than Netflix. Like, I don't even think I have Netflix anymore. I think, I, but I, I would not give up YouTube premium for anything because I, I need to get to the information I need to get to as quickly as possible. And I don't want to be like mudding the waters with ads and waiting and clicking and it's just a waste of time. I don't like wasting time. So thumbnails, um, again, decide if you want to do videos or live streams, what ratio you can work this out over time too. But again, 99% of the time I do live streams. I clip the content for, with those with Final Cut Pro. That's another another piece too. I so that's for Mac. Um, I don't know what the equivalent is on Windows. I could I could ask Google that. I'm sure there's some probably free ones too, but I never have again all the free stuff. I don't know. I feel like all the okay, Adobe Premiere. Yeah, yeah. So you could use Premiere otherwise. So that type of stuff is just indispensable for clips and and you don't have to there's not a big learning curve just to do clips and to do ranging and and to export stuff like that um at first there's a little bit of time it takes but after you get a the hang of it it's so simple and it's just like you know it's like a, it's a muscle you build right like anything else and it's not like you need to go take a class and all this like you know video making and all that i i like i didn't do any of that i just learned I'm very good at clipping. I've, I've made some other videos and stuff before. It takes me a long time and I don't want to be good at it. I just want to be really good at clipping because that's, that's what gives me the best bang for buck. I can get videos out on the channel. I schedule videos out these days for the past few months. I've been doing, I've been scheduling out, I'd say a couple of videos, at least one video per day. I try to do one video per day scheduled out. And there's a whole bunch of nuance with that. And not making scale, uh, stale content versus evergreen content versus, you know, there's a whole like calculation that goes on with that too. But that's sort of like almost autopilot these days. So I've did it. I've just been doing it for so long. So um, yeah, Opus for uh, creating shorts. There's a bunch of different short tools, some of them free, some of them not. Decide on your format. Do you want to do interviews? Do you don't want to do live streams? Do you want to do, uh, I mean, inter like, during your live streams, if you want to live stream, or if you want just want to create videos, you can do interviews offline and then edit them, post them all and stuff. For me, it's just, 
I think it's just it takes more time. I'm, I optimize towards the easiest way to do things possible. I want to remove all the clicks, all the steps I don't need. So I can just execute effectively and quickly each time. And if I need to spend some creative time on something, I will. But like in general, day to day, when I got a live stream, I just did. And I'm like, man, that was a really good one. I, there's probably like five or 10 clips in there. You know, getting building that muscle of getting through the clips really quickly is something I, I try to do. So uh, deciding your format, you want to do that. You want to do interviews. You just want to talk about the news, what's going on. Um, do you want to analyze topics? Do you want to do TA? Like whatever your skills are. I think, uh, I think, I think that's the big thing I, I see people being effective though, is not just being a general, I'm just gonna be a crypto person. I'm just going to talk about like whatever I want to at the time. I think if you specialize either in the community and topics and, and TA or analysis or just metrics and stats or, um, sentiment, or just, it doesn't have to be nerdy topics. It can be anything. Fundamental analysis. You just want to talk about how great hex is, for example, or, you want to talk about you know the all the all the chart data we have on pulse chain so far or you know you you just want to go through clips of other people talking about this stuff and give commentary like there's a ton of different ways to provide value where people think you're actually interesting enough to spend time clicking on your video but if you're not doing that and you're just kind of just doing whatever and again sometimes you'll do that at first but you'll get in the hang of it you'll get into your own niche but um i see people being more effective when they specialize in something so interview people, day-to-day -day stuff, whatever you want to do, figure that out at some point. And then uh, you can spend some time on your YouTube homepage, making that cool, doing your playlist when you have some content. Um, there's a bunch of, if you tap in like YouTube uh, channel tricks, there's a bunch of videos of like little, little things you can do to make your channel uh, more interesting or effective. And then, um, yeah, like just decide what you want to stream for. Um, like, are you going to be informative? Are you going to be entertaining? Are you there to get more likes, become popular, just get good information to people, uh, like a mix? Where's the mix? Where do you prioritize? Like, where do you rank them? All that stuff too. So a lot of people go into it, I think, and they try to be popular. They try and educate others or, but you know, honestly, just, there's a lot of people are just less informed than they think they are. <laughs> They'll go into it trying to educate people when they're just learning themselves. And it's like, it's hard to do that without having expertise in a certain area. And that shouldn't make people not want to do it. It just should, I guess, it's probably good to be humbled in yourself or self-aware in a way where you're like, okay, maybe I don't say things super confidently when I don't really know or nobody really knows, but you say it in a certain way. It's it's, And then there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of nuance. I don't want to get into the drama part of that or anything either, but in general, you know, avoid exhausting your future self with these goals and dreams of rolling crypto and all this stuff. Maybe you will, but you know, but just be careful like what you trade to get there too. You know, if you're exhausting yourself, you're streaming, you're making videos all the time and you're just doing that, like what are you giving up? What ROI are you getting out of that? Like what is your, you know, I think some thought into that goes can go a long way too. It can go poorly or it can go very well. So I definitely wish you wish you good luck there. And I just want to emphasize again, provide value. Like being successful at streaming, what I've found to be good so far, valuable so far, is providing value. Avoid the clickbait. Go for interesting topics to talk about with interesting people. Like do what you're good at or get better at what you think other people want to, to hear about and listen about and analyze. So don't cheat or don't be surprised if it doesn't last very long or you don't enjoy it as much as you thought you would or, or otherwise. So you know, like the Naval Ravikant quote, no one can beat you at being you. And that's what I try to bring to my brand too. A very unique brand, a lot of different ways. I've talked about it a million times on the show. So yeah, put yourself in the shoes of someone watching you. Like, would you watch you? And like, can you like see if you can do that or build towards that? Like, what would you be interested in hearing about? Like, I found that helps me find topics a lot too to talk about when there's a slow day or a slow week. And I'm like, man, I want to stream, but you know, I want to like engage with people, but I really don't know what to talk about. I'll just start looking on Twitter and be like, oh, here's something interesting. I could have some interesting commentary on that. I could be helpful. I could explain this topic. Or there's some problem. You know, if you code, oh, I can go write a tool that does this. Now I can talk about the tool. And, you know, there's some other, you know, learning to extrapolate off of that. So engaging with the community, social media, Twitter, real life meetups, um, online streaming, all that stuff's great. And <clears throat> I think that's... Uh, I think that's the bulk where we at. 
30 minute mark. Yeah, I think that's the bulk of the streaming portion that I can think of that's most important for the basics. Give you an idea of some of my day to day. If you want to know more about my day to day, you can ask about that too. But I'm not doing the stream to get everyone in. And <laughs> I'm literally, uh, I'm literally, I think this is hopefully this will be helpful to onboard more people into you know, streaming and, and being, uh, being on crypto Twitter or, or whatever, and give them a, a perspective and focus from someone who's been doing it for at least a little while, a couple of years now. So this is definitely not the stream where I'm going to have a ton of people, but I think I do stream sometimes where I think it's good that I put the content out there because somebody looking for this stuff, I think they'll come across it and hopefully find it helpful. And you never know when you're going to onboard that next huge streamer. Like you never know when you're, they're going to see, Oh, I watched your video and you know, you, you help them and they feel like, Oh, let me, maybe they'll give her ecosystem a chance. So TBD on the payoff of me creating this content. Sometimes I do streams like that. Sometimes I, I don't know how they're going to pay off, but I think, you know, I, I want, I want to help make this the greatest ecosystem on earth. So that's why I think, uh, that's why I think it's worth doing. All right, chat. Canvas is really good. It certainly is. It is really good. Cap cut. Yeah, I've heard. Um, was it SJ was telling me about Cap cut. I think I haven't tried it. I don't think yet. I've tried bead. I like bead, but I haven't tried Cap cut. Armando, what's happening? I've had YouTube for so long. Hey, dude, I know it's YouTube Red. I, I still call it Red for a long time, and then finally I, I switched to Premium. Call it Premium, but yeah, man, it's weird. You go on YouTube, you know go YouTube proper without signing in. You're like, what is this? Like, I can't do anything. It's so, so long to get to any information. You know, I never seen this for Max. I, I, I did a, I did how to be a crypto streamer with fashion coder a while back, but I thought that was about a year or so ago. And I've, I've learned some things since then. I think it'd be worth talking about. Bird bear time. Oh man, bird bear's not here. Sorry. If bird bear was here, I would, uh, it's my Burberry bear. I would bring him up, but he's not. So good morning. Evening Superman and fam. How's it going, man? Fast says, uh, being an influencer, mostly to be good at fighting and challenging other influencers. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely unique to my brand, I guess, too. I don't, uh, I don't engage in the drama. I try to, I try to reduce it. I try to not participate and, uh, not perfect, but I, but uh, I make an effort. I'll say that. Well, camera using, uh, I talked about it earlier. I well, I said I thought I remembered which one it was earlier. I think it's the stream. Let's see. I think it's the stream cam. Yeah, I think it's this one or something like this one. So it's the, I've got like two or three cameras that I've went through that I've like tried different ones. But uh, I think it's this one. It does a pretty good job. I'll just take, it's literally called stream cam. <laughs> They're literally marketing it to people streaming and it does a good job. Like a, I like it. Um, any other questions? Let's see. Taylor says, Max, talk about the big guy, just emerging as like all his hex and market sold. <laughs> I, and massive payoffs per teacher. Thank you for putting the silver lining on that. A lot of people just, they just like panic and like, oh my gosh, emerging as so bad. And then you're like, massive payout per teacher. Yes. Um, I'm, I haven't seen that. Um, I'll have to look on Twitter about it. I want to keep this stream more of more just the, the crypto influencing and streaming one, but uh, I'll check that out. Marcus sold Mercy Instinct, all the text and Marcus sold. You got to think like, why? Like there must be an opportunity. He must be like, wow, I got to get out of this thing and go get into this other thing. It's about to kick off. It must be like that move of, he thinks he sees something and maybe he does. Oh, maybe he gets a 10 X for what he's doing. I mean, who knows? We don't, we don't know what he's selling it for, or maybe he just has bills to pay. People do all kinds of stuff. Everyone's got a different situation. Like I don't judge anyone for selling and merging and staking or whatever. However, I do like being staked and getting those, uh, getting those extra payouts. So that's pretty cool. Great content. Appreciate that small bunny. Appreciate that. I think I went through everything. I, did I miss anything? Oh, that's a great question, Logie. Great question. What do you thought about on Twitter spaces? Man, I just, my, my, my take on Twitter spaces is I'm glad they exist. And I'm, I love that people do it. Like I, I, I truly do. 
and I participate every once in a while. I'll jump on one every once in a while. But to me, it's so hard to create content on Twitter spaces. So my whole thing is I like creating content, right? So Twitter spaces, unless you literally screen record it, like I hope that's a feature one day where you can just be like, record space and make it into a video that I can post on YouTube or something later. I, I don't know. I just, to me, it's not, I'm not, I can't, I found it hard to create content with Twitter spaces. So that's why I'm naturally not inclined to participate as much because unless like I need to literally go out of my way to go record it, I need to, and then I need to get in the conversation somehow because sometimes there's hundreds of people in there and I just, I don't like having hundreds of people. I don't like talking to hundreds of people. I don't know. I mean, it's not like they're all, they don't all have the microphone. I understand that, but I don't know. It's just not the kind of dialogue I prefer. I prefer hosting or being a guest with a smaller amount of people and just having a chat to talk to. So I just, I find it hard to create content with Twitter spaces for myself, but I'm so glad people like doing it because you know, you get a lot of attention, you get engagement. I get all that stuff. But for me, I'm not trying to, I want to grow my YouTube. I want to grow my content on there more than I want to grow my Twitter influence and stuff. They're both good. I like both, but I will lean much more heavily on YouTube content. So Twitter spaces, I'm not creating YouTube content unless I literally screen record the thing. And I, and I actually get in a good conversation with somebody, which who knows, maybe I will, maybe I won't, but I'm so glad they exist, but I just, it's just so hard for me to create content from them. So I'm content creator. I'm, uh, my thing is not, engaging with broader audiences like that's not my forte that's not, that's not one of my goals so it's the best explanation i can give it's a great question because a lot of people you know ask me oh, i'll come on twitter space and i come sometimes but i just don't prioritize it because it's like i don't feel like i'm creating i feel like that time i could be spent having that conversation i could spend it doing a live stream myself or going on someone's channel and talking about a topic where i can clip it and i can reuse it and i can make it into a short and i can do all those stuff where Twitter spaces is just a conversation and maybe somebody will record it if like Richard shows up or something. So, and half the time they don't even record them themselves. So you can't even watch it later. And it's, it's and there's no timestamps, right? It's like, I can't, you know, I'm glad they exist. And I love that people are doing them though. Seriously. Um, I love that people, other people like them. We don't need, that's the thing too. You don't need everyone to do the same thing. Like I'm glad there's things and topics and stuff in the community that people like to engage on and talk about and all that, that I don't because I can talk about the things I like to talk about that other people think are interesting and they can talk about those. And then the niche is, is filled. We have that, that, you know, the market is happy with someone talking about some, some topic that people think are interesting. So yeah, I, uh, that's my Twitter spaces. That's why I don't participate as much as a lot of people do. But again, I, I'm super glad they exist. Seriously, I'm, I'm glad people like them. Just not not my thing, at least not right now. Rich Heart to the Moon, I like that. Post more vintage, man. I post every Thursday. I don't know how. Can I? How much more do you want? You know what? I put. I just. Uh, that's another thing, actually, on on the influencing part, or the cr streaming part, whatever. I have so much content. I have Richard videos, Richard Hart Vintage Notable videos coming out every Thursday until now. I just, this just happened like an hour ago until July. The last video comes out the first Thursday in July, I think. Every Thursday. It's been going on for like a year now, I think. So for another year and a half, I've got vintage clips coming out every Thursday. And I just posted this one because I was like, some of them I think are so interesting and relevant now that I wanted to get, I wanted to post them. And I just started going through the Twitter spaces that have been recorded that he's on. So I went through pretty much all of his live streams I could find. Within reason, I was just like working like crazy, going through all this stuff. And I just got a ton of content. Each one, I put the link in the description. I got a title it. I got a thumbnail and all this stuff. A lot of work. And, but it accumulated into, I have, I don't have to, I don't have to touch the channel anymore if I didn't want to. If I stopped streaming, I stopped creating content today. I would still have content for more than a year coming out every week. It's the power of compound interest. <laughs> it's the power of, you know, putting in the work ahead of time, I guess. Um, it's pretty cool. So anyways, more vintage stuff. Well, if you got a playlist, 
And you tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure you haven't watched every, every video in here yet. So if you go to here, there are literally 261. Is there 261? Okay, so there's 185 that have been published and 76 unavailable. So that means they're basically scheduled. 76 videos scheduled. That's the every Thursday for another year. So I don't know if you watched every one of these yet. There's, there's probably a few hours worth of content. These are clips from different streams and stuff. There's a lot more coming. And literally, I have, you know, sometimes I post them on Sunday. Sometimes I post them on different times. But yeah, there's a ton of ton of vintage RH stuff. So uh, yeah, a lot of people seem to like them. So if you sub subscribe to the channel, you get them every Thursday at least for the next year or so. And maybe more when I just come across one, I'm like, hey, I got so much content. I'll just post one on Sundays or I'll post one on whatever random day. Any other questions on the channel, on how to stream? Does everyone feel like they understand if they wanted to be a streamer, if they wanted to be influencer, content creator, whatever, do you understand? Are you missing anything other than just wanting to do it? Like, I want to make sure if you want to do it, you know what you need to do and, and kind of what it's like, kind of like day in the life, right? Day in the life, I'm live streaming. Whenever I set up one up, I'll schedule it or uh, ahead of time with somebody, you know, that's not, I didn't really touch on scheduling with people. So, you know, I'll get a guest and a lot of things, you know, I'll ask them, Hey, do you want to stream on this day at this time? It's what I have available or ask them when they're available. And then I'll just, we'll just set it up. We'll you know, hopefully both put on our calendars beforehand. I'll, you know, if there's any agenda or otherwise I want to tell them about, I will go, Hey, do you want to talk about this? And then we'll do the stream. And then in the green room, they'll show up maybe, a couple minutes before we start, we'll talk for a minute and then I'll do the intro, play that. And then, uh, you know, we'll talk about whatever topics. And at the end, you know, we'll say our goodbyes. They'll usually stay in the green room for a minute. I'll, you know, usually thank them or otherwise say a hey, great stream, uh, you know, catch up on whatever we want to chat about in the stream. And then if there's anything I want to clip from it, then I'll download it, download the video, put in Final Cut Pro whenever I want, either the same day or the next day, usually. I try not to wait because you know you're if you wait, you end up accumulating a lot of stuff and it's like you just won't do it after time. So I try to try to do it quicker uh, rather than later. And then clips out, I'll do the thumbnails, uh, I'll schedule them. And again, you don't have to produce the videos. You don't have to clip. I can make 10 clips and maybe three of the clips will come out that are that are you know time sensitive. For example, they may get old, they may get stale soon. I may schedule them to come out in the in the next week those three clips next week or two and the other seven clips. Let's see if I got 10 clips, for example, maybe they're not time sensitive. Maybe that could wait two or three weeks and now I can just schedule them out. And if I want to stream for a day or whatever, I'll still have content coming out and I can, and you accumulate that over time where sometimes I literally have too much content. I don't want to, I try not to post more than two videos per day. Uh, if I wanted to, I could post many more a lot of time, especially when I'm streaming a lot because I tend to get more clips. I have to do more live streams, obviously. So I try to keep it no more than three. Sometimes I do four, but I really have to space it out because I don't want to mess up people's feed either. Like when I sub to somebody and they have a bunch of videos coming out, the only person that's allowed to do it is Somi because his videos are so much packed full of interesting information. I'm like, cool, let's do it. Like I can just pick and choose. But otherwise, I don't want to like, I know people have other subs, other people they want to, you know, they want to see content from. I don't want to blow up their feed every day because I have a lot of content, right? So I really try to space it out and I try to be thoughtful of if this was me, you know, I want to keep them informed. I want to keep them content coming, but also don't want to exhaust them. And I want them to unsub because they just don't want to see my videos every day or they don't want to see them like hours and hours per day. I don't like taking away from all their other people they sub to. So I try to put care into that. I try to curate the content and curate the the feed. I really try to curate the feed for people too, uh, just to make it maximum amount of um, useful information and and not overwhelming either. I, I you know I'm not perfect, but I try to be thoughtful about that at least and, and make them enjoy being sub to the channel. So and they enjoy the all right shorts. Yeah, I got a lot of shorts on there too. Uh, Opus, you guys are interested in shorts? Opus uh, is it Opus.io? Opus.info, crap, Opus.info, 
Let's just Google. If I type in the wrong URL, it's going to take me somewhere weird. Opus Shorts. Opus.pro. Yeah, it's, it's always the one, the, the other one. So this is cool. Um, it's free. Maybe some of it's free. They don't give you that long, I don't think. But sign up for this. This is pretty cool to auto do shorts and stuff like that. Um, that's another thing. Veed, I mentioned too. Thanks, Logan. Appreciate that, man. Appreciate that, Armando. Prefer it from you, your direct. I will filter like so many of my basket stuff. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'm more direct, more, more just like giving you the facts where I try to be objective in a lot of topics too. I, I enjoy Somi though. I mean, Somi informs me. I think I don't think I'm the only one. I feel like he has helped air streamers become more effective and more informed in so many ways. Because for me, if there's a topic that I don't know much about and it just happened, I'll watch a video on him talking about it. And now, even if I don't agree with his take or whatever, I'll have a I'll have some perspective to build upon for me to form my own opinion. And sometimes it's very influential and sometimes it's not, but he provides so much value, not just community. He provides value to, again, I'm, I'm speculating to me, at least he does. He provides, give me a really good perspective on topics that, you know, before I even get a chance to do all the research and, you know, form my own opinion, I'll be like, Oh, that's what some me thinks. Okay. Let me go, you know, think about this a bit or go do some more research and then I'll come up with something, but it's always really good to hear his takes, even though, you know, even if I don't agree with it or I don't think it's the best take or whatever, he has a lot of great takes, but um, it's good to know. And uh, yeah, take, I'll be talking about our print takes ages. I haven't had to that prune mine. Every time I try to prune it, it uh, it says it's not time yet. So interesting. Yeah, six to 10 hours. That sounds about right though. I'm glad that if you're using the script, I hope it's working. Cause literally I've not been able to, I've not did it myself yet. That would be what's happening. Somebody's funny. Yeah, he is super funny. Very entertaining, very informative. That is a awesome combination. All right, everyone. That's your, that's your, uh, that's your content for today. Uh, I think I covered, covered a lot of stuff. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments, uh, at me on Twitter at RH Maximus, just the way it sounds on Twitter. Happy to talk about stuff when I have time as well. Um, awesome. Script is working. Cool. And um, yeah, hopefully this is helping. If you're a new streamer, hopefully this helps you uh, get your, get wrap your head around what's, you know, at least one perspective of how it's been for a couple of years or so. And uh, that's all I got for you. Here's my outro. Sci-Vive and 5555. Five, five, five. We are out.